Welcome to I Finally Get It. On this week's episode, we have Luke Andrus, owner of 38 Anytime Fitness franchises. Joining us in studio as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. I think my light bulb moment was um, that not all paths to entrepreneurship are the same. Uh, we typically think of the entrepreneur, I got 30 grand in my account that I scrapped up and saved for, and now I'm putting it all on the line yeah. for this business concept. And and that's a beautiful story. And so many have that story. It's incredible. Mine was just a little different, you know, my path to entrepreneurship. And it was surprising. <laughs> uh, well, look, that's why we're here. Let's yeah. hear about it. How'd you get started? Where'd you grow up and all that? And... So I grew up in Eunice, um, okay, yeah. born and raised in Eunice, um, family of seven. I was the youngest and my father was a cabinet maker. Great mm -hmm. entrepreneur, you know, great worker. And after high school, I came to Lafayette. I was here for a while. I got in the fitness industry sort of by accident. One of my good friends, Bobby Hines, opened a, an Anytime Fitness, and I went on to be his employee. That was after doing videography for a while. When I went back to college, that was really hard for me to continue. So I got into fitness while I finished a history degree. And fitness just wooed me. I just found such a passion and purpose where I was. So after I finished my degree, I left and just stayed in the Anytime Fitness world. I really enjoy the franchise. It's it's great. There's a lot of people to love and there's a lot of passion and purpose there. And that led to a lot of other things, you know. So so when you were employed by your friend, uh -huh. how long did it take you before you ended up managing and then maybe Owning. I mean, the whole journey, it started in 2009, mm -hmm. uh, started managing personal training departments, and that lasted until 2015. In 2014, I won an award, a Personal Trainer of the Year Award, which was <laughs> nationally recognized. It was That's a big huge. deal. Yeah. yeah, and that got a lot of owners calling me to ask, hey, how do I do things? How are we going to be as successful as you? And I really enjoyed the coaching side of this and thought, wow, I should be a consultant. That would be really fun. In 2015, I took a job with Anytime Fitness Corporate as a consultant. So my family and I packed up and moved to Minnesota for five years. And wow. I worked up there as a consultant. And then I worked on the operations side, teaching new franchisees, stuff like that. So there's a light bulb moment in there that you have to take these opportunities when they come up. Yeah. And you you packed your whole family up and moved to Minnesota. Yeah. And I think I think the light bulb for me is that I had an opportunity to do it a year before. If I would have taken the opportunity then, it would not have been the same opportunity in 2015. And it, everything would have changed. Yeah. Timing is, is key. Yeah. Yeah. The timing, knowing when to say no and knowing when to say yes is a big deal. And that's, that's another light bulb. We could be here all day yeah. you know, reaching over and hitting the light. But you got to say no to be able to say yes to some things, to the right things. Yeah. And so that sounds like your, your situation. Yeah, absolutely. In 2014, I got an opportunity to work for corporate, but I felt like it was just after I won the award. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like if I leave now, we we were working on a partnership with a, you know, a personal training programmer. And I wanted to be one of the first franchisees to do this and spearhead this and try it in our own clubs. So I said no to the opportunity to work for corporate, even though it was my dream job. Yeah. And I decided to stick around for about a year and just implement this process. Well, that one year ended up to be, it was pivotal because at the end of that year, when I did go to corporate, they partnered with the same person with that process I was running. Yep. And then I became one of the master trainers that was sort of teaching that to all the franchisees. And I was the only one at Anytime Fitness Corporate with that experience. So if I wouldn't have said no then, then it wouldn't have put me on the position to present at corporate, which was really the greatest opportunity I had there to move along and build the relationships that I have now. Yeah. And how far, how long were you there again? I was corporate? there for about five years. Okay. And then you had the opportunity to buy a franchise? Yeah. So the opportunity was actually private equity investor uh -huh. named Kevin Tupi reached out and I actually knew his current CEO at that time in 2019. And they had a startup. They had 10 locations that they had previously bought. They were about a year old, so they were really new, no regional managers, no infrastructure for the business. And they hired me away from corporate to be the COO of Blue Star Investments. And you got it. Four months later, the CEO resigned and Kevin 
approached me with the position and I didn't apply. I told him I'd be terrible at it and he volunteered me to take it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> and uh, at that point I was brought in as an owner. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then I guess you've grown that organization or is it a different organization? No, it's that? the same. So yeah, we had, yeah. yeah, we started with 10. I was there when we had 10 yeah. and we got five more shortly after that. I took over when we had 15 and now we have 38. I took over... Six weeks before COVID happened. Oh, no. And the world crashed down. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. cute? And yeah. then, so what kind of challenges did you did you face there? Oh, gosh. What did we not face? Well, I mean, was it anytime closed, I, I guess? Yeah. So we were in mostly in the Midwest at the time. Mm -hmm. Different states had different policies. States right next to each other had completely different policies. But in Minnesota, where we had the primary amount of clubs, we were shut down for 114 days in 2020. Jeez. Yeah, that hurt. It was brutal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would have been great to tell us to limit our capacity so that we could, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, let me figure things out. But closing the business was was really yeah, tough to really handle. Hard. Your initial <laughs> oh. tenure as CEO, you have 15 of them and they're closing down. Probably my first all staff meeting was to lay off employees, to furlough employees. And there's nothing worse. There's nothing it was, worse. It was trial by fire, man. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, obviously things have worked out though. After COVID, tell, about, tell the comeback story. 2021, I think a lot of people was, uh, a lot of people were just ready to get back in the clubs and get back and we thought the fitness industry would never be the same peloton rose up everybody was buying pelotons and yep. virtual became the new future of fitness in general but in 2021 everybody was ready to come back and get some accountability and you know see some people so yeah. we bounced back tremendously in 2021 yeah it's huge by the time 2022 rolled around it's it's like covid never happened yeah yeah so i guess to get to 15 to 38 there must have been some folks that weren't managing as well as it could have and that COVID just killed them and you just acquired or, or how Joe? No, we, we like to acquire good businesses. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we're not a turnaround project at the moment. So most of the, I think it was just owners who had good locations. Mm -hmm. They were tired. They were tired They're of fighting. Tired. You know, yeah, they were yeah. tired of implementing mask mandates and keeping up with all of that stuff. And so, you know, I, I would literally cold call owners and ask, Hey, you know, I know a lot of people were tired after COVID. Some people were thinking about getting out of the fitness industry, just wondering if that's you. And I yeah, bought yeah, yeah. several clubs off of those cold calls. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Another light bulb, man. Yeah, man. I mean, we're going to be all day. Uh -huh. That is great. Tell me about what life is like right now with, with any time. You have 38 stores. Yeah. Are you looking to grow? Uh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. My partner is, he's aggressive. Yeah. I probably would have stopped at, if that, it was, if it was my money I was spending, I'd probably stop at about five to 10. But y'all uh, are managing wants, well though. We're right? managing well. Yeah. We're, we're a high performer and uh -huh. we're doing great and we're providing jobs, man. That's what I'm passionate about. Love it. Yeah. So we're going to continue to acquire and right now we're the fourth largest anytime franchisee and we want to be the largest. You know, that's, that's the goal. That's great. Yeah, that's great. You know, you say one of the things you love coaching mm -hmm. and you're a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. um, it, do you still get your hands wet and get in there and mix yeah. it up a little bit? Yeah, I still like to visit the clubs and I have friends that have reached out about personal training and I help where I can. Uh -huh. I'm still very close to the world and I stay active myself. I, you know, yeah. I've developed habits while I was, while I was a trainer that I've kept up and I love it though. I love going to the clubs and and checking out the world. I just don't get to do it as a, as often as I like. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, with 38, it's impossible to visit Yeah, I know. every he, single he, one of them if I yeah. want to keep my marriage and my children. <laughs> that's so, exactly right. That's pretty yeah. important. Outside of Anytime Fitness, it's just too much to think of going into a, an adjacent market right now and just, but but what do you see for the future? Just more, more Anytimes? More Anytimes, we do want to go out into another market. Something really significant just happened in the fitness industry Thursday. Uh -oh. Which was, yeah, on February 29th, Anytime Fitness and Orange Theory announced a merger Holy. of their parent companies, which is huge. Yeah. And so I don't even know what that means yet, but it's it's very exciting for us because that's going to widen the pool of investors. That's going to widen our opportunities to you know start new franchises. We want to stay in the health space. Mm -hmm. That's where we love. We do want to diversify. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I got it. So um, is that public? Can we? 
<laughs> yeah, it's public. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. I don't want to yeah, air you can, this. You and can all Google of a sudden, it. It's fine. Yeah, it was they Luke announced that it. Said it. <laughs> yeah, well, it was super secret. They, yeah, they that took, they, you know, they they announced it and they said thirty minutes from now there'll be a press release in the world will know. Jeez, so, yeah. now, that's a big deal, and no telling what the opportunities that are coming. It's yeah. it's one of the largest mergers in the fitness industry history. Yeah, for sure. So coming out of Eunice, I know a friend of yours out of Eunice, uh-huh. uh, Nate Johnson. And uh-huh. Both of y'all seem like y'all are real legitimate entrepreneurs. Mm. You know, I don't know you well, but I know Nate. And Eunice is a small little town for anybody who's listening and don't it realize it. What What's going on there? What inspired you? Man, it was just, uh, well, for one, our fathers, we're second generation business owners and our fathers were partners. They started, I know his dad dad. and my dad opened their Christian Mobile Works in 1979. Yep. They worked in his backyard. And so I'd go to Nathaniel's house and we, we hung out constantly. Yeah. And so we grew up just talking about the future and talking about getting out of Eunice. We love Eunice. Yeah, no, Eunice is great. It it was, Lafayette was a big city, That's right. big lights, big city. So- we just started talking and, you know, we, we talked about his cafe and I was going to help him with the mosaic, the first mm-hmm. one that he mm-hmm. opened, but I wanted to leave Eunice. And so <laughs> I left and he became a business owner at 22 and uh, I'm trying to catch up, you know? No, nah, brother, y'all are both rocking. Y'all are both doing <laughs> We're having well. fun, but it's, it's good. You know, we're, we're talking about partnering moving forward and being second generation partners is really important to both of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I've always been a little more risk averse and sort of just focused on, focused on where I was at, at the moment. And it was just a series of those events that sort of led to, oh, now I'm an entrepreneur. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and I great. didn't have to take out, you know, a million dollar loan to do it. I thought I have to, one day I have to give up everything to get into this. Yeah, no, no. And it didn't work that way. It yeah, just you worked your was way just, Yeah, you it was just a series in. of every job I had. I didn't expect I would have that job, but I just did my best and then opportunities came up. Some entrepreneurs want to be on their own. They want to develop what they're doing on their own. For me, I've been, I've always been better with partners Mm -hmm. and I've always been better as the first follower. And I talked about that Ted talk where there's a person dancing and then the person dancing alone looks crazy until the first follower comes. And then that person starts dancing and then another person warms up to the idea. And before you know it, there's this huge crowd. For me, I've always worked better with accountability and I've worked better as a first follower where I want to be the guy that's helping my partner look great. And it's always worked really well with us and that dynamic because when I got this job, I wasn't ready for this job, yeah, right? Yep. Which is sort of confirmation that you should do the job, right? And you should accept yeah, it right. because it's terrifying. I would never have been able to do this without the knowledge that he's been able to give me through his experience. You know, yeah, he's been a tremendous and, and mentor. There. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. Where I lacked, he definitely was great. And then, then I'd just been drinking out of a, fire hose for the last four years with him hey no stopping y'all man i don't think good so combination. i don't think he won't let me stop <laughs> <laughs> i'm like hey let's slow down he won't let me stop no <laughs> so, so we're good. a good team we're yeah, a good no doubt team. about it no doubt about it you kind of worked your way into becoming an entrepreneur and you said right. that your path is different than most your typical entrepreneurs yeah how has some of the things that you have done along the way contributed to the knowledge base, the skill sets, and the experience you needed to become the entrepreneur you are today? I've always found myself in surprised by opportunities. Even what the Bible says, you're trusted with the small things, you'll be trusted with the big things. That's right. And I've sort of always taken that mindset where it's, I was a personal trainer while I was trying to get a history degree. Well, I'm going to try to be the best trainer I can be because life is more fun when you're doing good things and That's right. hanging out with cool people and being excited about everything that you have, even if it's not your end game. And then that led to a national award, (laughs) totally by accident. Like it was just, oh, wow. Okay. You know, and a lot of people wanted to talk to me and then that led to consulting. And then with consulting, it was, how do I, how do I change the game and not necessarily change it, but how do I make the largest impact that I can on the franchisees that I'm coaching? And once that reputation got out, and this all connects, right? Because that reputation gets out. And then it's, 
Luke's a great teacher. And then it's, okay, now he can present for corporate. Well, then that puts more franchisees in front of me, Yeah. right? As I'm building all of these relationships, one of those franchisees is the one that says, hey, I got an opportunity. You can be the COO, which was totally by accident. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you really think it was by accident? And none of these things are truly by yeah. accident. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> when I became CEO, it's actually funny that you say accident because the first thing I did was I bought a book called The Accidental CEO. I've read it. Yeah. Yeah. That's I read it. that day one. I was like, <laughs> there's got to be a book about a guy who didn't ask to be a CEO <laughs> yeah. and got and got that by accident. Oh, and I was like, there is. Sweet. So I read the whole thing on day one. I had to look up a job description after I got the job. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah. Yeah. What you got there? I say accident, but the truth is, right, it, it's that statement behind we make our own luck, Yeah. right? Yeah, sure, There's this book sure. called The Serendipity Mindset. And it's a great book because they take two people, one who feels he's lucky, one who feels they're not, and they put them in the same situation. And the lucky one walks away from that day thinking, this is one of the best days ever and takes more opportunities. And, you know, it's a great experiment. But the unlucky one is like, yeah, oh, it's just a regular day. The truth, of the truth is that like, if you're just doing the best you can yeah. at any job you have and making sure you can, you know, if you're your own competition, you're making sure you're the best you can be, then what happens is, there <laughs> it's it is. A, it's another yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, and what happens is you start to capitalize on those opportunities that may not be opportunities for other people, but they become opportunities for you. Yep. And that's what happened with me. It was, I sent a Facebook message to someone just saying, how are you guys? And they replied, great, looking for a COO. <laughs> no, anybody. Right. And this was right after with corporate. I had been in a situation where I'd been traveling a lot and I was started to, started to get beat down by the bureaucracy of it all. Yeah. And that morning I decided, man, I might open myself up to other opportunities. I sent that Facebook message. And by noon, I said, you know, hey, yeah, I might know somebody what are you looking for? They said, well, you know, smart, Southern, charming, bald. I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love <laughs> And so I gave them a call. They gave me a job offer that Saturday. And That's Monday morning I had a new job. Yeah, dude, there are no accidents. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, you're on your path. And that's the cool thing is when you, you know you're on your path, you, you get there. The the one thread that I keep hearing in everything that you've said, every stop along your way is you put the customer first. Hmm. When you were coaching, it was about the Anytime Fitness client, right? Yeah. When you were coaching the coaches or training them or the owners, it was about them. And and it still is about the franchisees or the the probably the general managers and the and the stores that sure. that you're operating now. That's amazing. What's been your most pleasant discovery it, it, along the way? When you're just building relationships and talking to people and being the best that you can be for them, right? Even as a consultant, it's just, it, it's trust, man. It's yeah. all about relationships and trust. It really is. And that's been the, that's been the currency for my entire career because that's continued to put me in situations. Now my job is to buy anytime fitnesses. Well, guess what? Correct. Half of the franchisees I reach out to already trust me. Because I helped them with nothing to gain years ago. And I didn't do it because I thought it'd pay off one day. I just did it because, man, that's just what being a good little Cajun that's Louisiana right. is. Everybody's family. You help as many people as you can. And so those people have gone with our company to buy their, to be trusted with their business because they know me and what I'm about. And, you know, they knew back then how I was able to help them. Yeah, man, that's huge. It really is. Let's say you have a Joe Blow out there who wants to get into some kind of business, whether it's entrepreneurship or franchisees. Sure. Which way would you head today in the current climate? Man, it really depends on who you are. Yeah. I think that I, I'm I'm a person that would gravitate more towards a franchise. Yeah. It's easier to replicate. You're not starting from scratch. You're getting the system already. You're getting brand recognition already. And it's scalable. And so it all depends on what you want your ceiling to be, right? Because with a franchise, you can scale so much quicker than with a startup. Yep. No doubt. And, you know, I, but Nathaniel and I took two different paths, right? To bring it back to him. And what he's doing, I feel like that is perfect. 
for, for Nathaniel. That's right. Right. With Rev and they have this tremendous product. And one day I want to help him franchise that because I think it's going to kill it. <laughs> right. For me, it's it's more about, hey, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I just need to take the processes they have, make it my own, put my personality on it and gain people's trust through it. And the other thing about franchising is if you're working with investors, I like franchising because it's so much harder to develop a new gym mm -hmm. than to purchase an existing one with existing members already. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Right, so for yeah. us, franchising is our way to go because I can scale tremendously. Last year, we opened four locations, we bought six. This year, we purchased three so far. I'd like to surpass 40 this year. I'd like to get closer to 50 by the end of the year if I can't mm -hmm. get 50 before Christmas. So it's just a lot easier to scale when you're going with a franchise. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No doubt about it. There's some franchisees, I've had some experience, as I shared with you. They just want to go away from the model, though. Uh, would, would you recommend, just, look, stick with the model. It, yeah, it's there I think, for a reason. Yeah, I think stick with the model. It's the same as we used to work with sales processes. Yeah. And they're like, my sales process is perfect. My sales process is perfect. I can probably walk into any gym that we have, use three completely different sales processes and sell personal training to those three people with those processes because it's more about the confidence that i have in the process you still need a process i think with franchising a lot of people do want to go away from the model but they're just going against the grain and that's not efficient yeah right yep. you need efficiency we try to stick to the model we like the model the model's successful they got to you know i think they're pushing over six thousand Anytime fitnesses. Are they worldwide or the worldwide? Just oh, seven wow. continents. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, they they were on six continents and then decided to pay for a anytime fitness to be on an Antarctic cruise ship <laughs> so that they could have the bragging rights. Same, same. <laughs> Which I'm like, that's how I know I'm in the right franchise, yeah, right? Yeah, no, no, that's <laughs> outstanding. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, so um, give me a business tip. The tip I would have for any person that wants to be an entrepreneur or just a good employee. So I once heard someone say, it's the seemingly insignificant moments in your life that shape your destiny. It's not so much about this big. And that's what I like about your podcast is these light bulb moments can be real, real little, but you're trying to show people that's right. it's the little things that are actually the big things. That's right. Right. That's exactly right. And I think a lot of people are looking for those big breaks, but in reality, it's just about that grind every day being the best you can, doing everything you can with excellence, write down the good things you're doing, write down the bad things you did and make yourself better from it. The opportunities come because when you're a great employee, which are hard to find these days, those opportunities are going to be magnetic. You're going to be magnetic. Yeah. Those opportunities are going to come to you. And it's really just about saying no to the right ones and saying yes to the right ones. That's right. Right. But it all comes down to just that steady grind of just being a great worker that cares about people. And that's building trust. I trust you. Thanks. <laughs> I do. You, you, <laughs> you convince me. As you come across people, you know, as you, when you were a personal trainer to now uh, meeting other franchisees, how do you try to leave people different and better just because they met you? I think it's just stop and listen. If someone reaches out for help, answer the call. Like, just help them. Because people helped you along your way. Don't charge for it. Like, I mean, you can, if you're a consultant and you have to, that's fine. I just mean, even with that, it's the, have those first conversations to just help people out as often as you can, because you never know what that trust will, will grow into. And I think that's what people have done for me. Yeah. I've had these tremendous business owners just want to see me succeed because they like me. And it's like, all right, you know, they gave me great advice. I would seek their advice and I try to return that favor as often as I can. So, you know, I get a lot of franchisees that reach out to me and it's, hey, I know you're not selling your business. In fact, you probably have the same goal that I do. Cool. Let's talk. Let's help each other. And you, you connect, you build trust and, you know, something good will come around. And and that's the thing is the opportunities, they're gonna come around, man. Yeah, if you're yeah, no if you're doing it. the best you can, they come around. Yep. You know, it's it's really gonna become there's gonna come a point into your life where you're saying no to opportunities much more than you're saying yes. Yep. And you get to pick and choose the right ones.
Thanks for tuning in to I Finally Get It. For more information on Luke, just visit the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you're an entrepreneur and you have a light bulb moment that you think would help another entrepreneur, reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.